Hey everyone, Lotus Prince here. It's time to take another look at the Resident Evil 2 board game. Now, we've covered all the main campaigns in the thing, but that doesn't mean that there isn't more content to take a look at. For example, I have a couple of interesting things here, and both of them are the Malformations of G expansion. There are two of these things. Here's one, which has what appears to be Form 4 on it, if you look at the artwork, which looks pretty cool. Now, this is not a whole other thing to do as a standalone or anything, but rather something you can enhance the main game with. This is something that's all about William Birkin. You may remember that the base game came with a Form 3 William Birkin figure and some boss data for him. And toward the end of the game, when you have to fight his fourth form, they fudge it, you just reset his health, and I think you add a couple of HP to it, and you give him one or two more moves from the deck of cards. But in this case, we actually have Stage 2 and Stage 4 figures, which we'll take a look at shortly, as well as it comes with a board game tile, actually. If I had to guess, I would say that's probably for Stage 2, because there already exists a tile for where you fight Stage 3 for a second, and then it turns into Stage 4. Now we actually have Stage 4, so we could put it there. So my assumption is that the board game tile is that big yellow elevator thing you ride in, in the video game when Form 1 turns into Form 2 and you're trapped in that little area. That's my assumption. And it comes with a bunch of cards, which are going to be the boss data, and the booklet for how to deal with this. So I'm not exactly sure how they'll incorporate Stage 2. Maybe they'll add something to the map. I guess. Stage 4, I assume you just play the final level of the base game, and then you put this thing in and add the rules to it to make it a little more real. But on top of that, there's also, of course, the Malformations of G, B Files expansion, and if you've played the video games, I think you know what this artwork represents. This thing is quite interesting. We have Birkin Stage 1, because the base game, I believe, had us fight Birkin, but of course we had to fudge it and put Stage 3 in there. But this time we have Stage 1, the scientist with a lab coat wielding a pipe, and we have Stage 5 for when you complete the A and B campaigns and the hero stories converge. This does not come with a special tile, but it does have the miniatures, the cards, and the booklet, so let's see just what this is all about. Well, here we are with the Malformations of G expansion. I took the liberty of removing the plastic from the box, but we can still open the thing, right? So we got the cover off, and we have our little manual, which I'm rather excited about. I'll take a look at the actual physical stuff, uh, well, the other physical stuff later. So here is an example of our figures. We'll get a closer look after the fact. Got some boss cards, even item cards, and boss behavior cards. The tile is something I find interesting. Uh, I neglected to remember that tiles are two-sided. So here's where you fight Form 4, right? It's in that factory room. But the other side was what I had predicted, where you're on that construction vehicle thing, which is the part that's surrounded by red, that little car you're in, and the metal platform that goes around it is where you fight Form 2 in the, at least the PS1 game. So that takes care of both of those. That's where you would fight the boss. So, what are we doing with this uh, expansion booklet? This is flavor text. Head researcher William was the genius responsible for the G virus. We know, we know. So, two terrifying new boss encounters. Both are designed to expand upon the core game, which is not surprising. They both are upgrades to particular scenarios. So, you can add them to scenarios, uh, which are played as standalone games, or be part of the narrative campaign, which is pretty cool. So, Line of sight. Oh, okay, they had to, they might have to specify this for figures with massive bases. Can you draw an uninterrupted line from the center of the square occupied by the larger model to the center of the one with the smaller model? That's a clever way of looking at it. Collision attacks. A new profile for models with massive bases. There's an evade difficulty and effects resulting from a failed roll. So if it moves toward a character, it'll attempt to enter the square that the character occupies. There's a collision results. You push the character. Wow, that's like a Dark Souls technique. Like a Dark Souls board game, I mean. And after the model with the massive base has finished the movement, 
then the characters have to evade roll to avoid the effects. Ungainly bulk. A model with a massive base occupies four squares, which is freaking crazy. That is unheard of so far. Can not move diagonally. Will enter two new squares of movement. Look at this thing. Birkin next to Leon. My god. <laughs> Stage four inches movements. It knocks Leon out. That's, that's a new one. Battle on the elevator platform. Yay, it's form two. So this is an additional boss encounter for 6A. Special rules. Updated object objective. So you gotta kill Birkin 2 and put everybody on the elevator platform. Replace the tile originally in the scenario with this one. Extra firepower. Throw in a magnum and grenade launcher card from item deck B. Uh, Birkin stage behavior. A uh, stage 2 behavior deck. We got stuff. We'll take a look at that. And then... Yeah, the stage four stuff. So, special rules. Uh, you gotta kill Birkin and everyone goes in the elevator control room. Same idea. Use that tile. Okay, so on stage three goes to zero, instead of adding a little bit of HP and a couple of new cards, you instead replace the model and you give him his behavior deck, which is something else. And that's the backside. So, we have the, uh, the box here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of time to get the stuff out of there. Okay, here we are. The item deck is nothing really special in and of itself. We have some B cards, but they're things we've seen before. One additional clip of magnum rounds, grenade rounds, and another magnum. So I guess two characters could have it. Then we get to the, the boss behavior cards. So stage two Birkin looks like this. That's the, the Birkin I think I probably most well recognize. I like that quite a bit. So, stage two, Relentless. Before drawing a card from his behavior deck, he moves toward the character, which is pretty scary. And Weakened State. If his health dial is reduced to 10, the evade difficulty is reduced by 1, so that's actually an advantage if you start laying out the damage. For Birkin 4, you get that the dog form, almost the final form, almost. And here, Unstoppable. After an attack is resolved against him, it moves toward the character, so it's the opposite of stage two in that regard. For stage two, we have double strike, so it just straight up hits twice. First hit does one damage, second hit does two, and I think that means that it's been a while. I think there's like there's pushback for the second hit. It's kind of tough to evade, and there's the the arms. I forgot what that means. It hits everybody. Maybe it's been a while. We got two double strikes, three double strikes. Then we have talon rake, so just. One big attack for two damage. Two Talon Rakes. Then, we have Wild Swing. Again, two damage. Don't want to get hit by that. Stage four. Okay, we got the Trample. So it just moves toward you. And characters failing the Evade roll suffer an additional one. So you get hit, and you could get hit. That sucks. So there's your Tramples. Three of them. Savage Bite with his giant stomach mouth. Four damage! That's ridiculous! That's absurd! Do not ever get hit by that. Are you kidding me? But it looks like that's the only one of that attack. Then we have Rending Claws. Two damage. Still rough. And then... Ooh, looks like we got something special going on here. We have Predatory Leap. So, place Burke in stage four with part of its base in the same square as the character with the lowest health track, marker on the tile, and then resolve collision, so it jumps on them. That's a callback from the video game where he leapt on the shelves and then leapt back down at you. So there's two of those. So, I guess at this point, we could take a look at the actual models, which I'm most excited about. I'm a sucker for these models. Here's stage two. So you got the, uh, the eye on the shoulder, you got the big claw there, I love it. You get his actual head. All that gross stuff going on in the, the back of him. And as you can see, he's a big guy. It looks like he takes up a, a whole square by himself, which is pretty insane. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Stage 2 has 25 health and a movement of 1 by default. And the Stage 4 also has a movement of 5. But then you get this come toward you with a very difficult to evade, because he's so big. Speaking of so big, look at this guy. This is freaking crazy. This looks awesome. Got that big open stomach. 
got the giant claw thing going on here. He's crawling on all fours. And look at this. For, for perspective, I'm going to turn the tile over so you can clearly see the squares. Boom. That, that's not right. So form 3 turns into that in the standard scenarios, which is pretty amazing. But you know what? I get the feeling it's going to get even crazier because we also have the B-Files expansion. And here we are with the B-Files expansion, Malformations of G. I'm quite excited about this one because this is the ultimate conclusion to Resident Evil 2. So we open it up. Once again, we have ourselves a rules booklet specifically for this scenario. Here we got Stage 1 and the delightful Stage 5. Boss behavior, boss reference. It doesn't look like there are item cards this time around. Additional content. Birkin Stage 1 is an upgrade to 11B in the core game. Well, I guess the B expansion files of the core game. Offering players a final obstacle as they escape the RPD building in Stage 5 is in a special scenario as they speed away from Raccoon. So you can do them in standalone games or narratives. So there's 15B, which you can play after 14B, which sounds amazing. So line of sight, collision, we've been over this. Ungainly bulk, we've been over this as well. But here's what I, I quite like here. It's just another scenario. Scenario brief 11B upgrade, that first encounter with Birkin. So we have to approach this differently than usual. Just because it's an extra base doesn't mean to find extra items. Play cautiously. So there's, uh, see the brief below for which additional tile is used. You know, you're going to have to add another tile that like that sewer looking tile where we fought the uh i forgot what it was called that like the g mutant or whatever it was that gross thing that reproduces and sends little bugs at you so you fight birkin there in that bridge that makes sense so you gotta kill birkin and the characters are on the cesspool secret passage uh the exit star in stairwell b is connected to the stairwell in the cesspool and not an exit point and then behavior deck and cards and tokens. So we have a little bit of extra stuff going on here. And then scenario B. The true ends to the nightmare. The emergency train races away from the underground lab. Detonations from the expired self-destruct sequence puncturing the air. A klaxon sounds as the entire train shudders violently and Birkin appears, tearing through the steel carriages. Now is the time to see the true end of the Resident Evil 2, the board game. So extra firepower here, add some magnum rounds, add some grenade rounds. And each of the tiles forming the underground train location count as a single tile. So you can move through the tiles and are not counted, uh, you don't need doors. And then crushed to death. Birkin moves from the left of the field to the right. There you go, see? He's pretty large and he's slowly moving across. So if the boss reaches the far right and he can't move anymore, then you're crushed to death. Scenario's over. That sucks. Card decks. So it's just a straight-up scenario. That's pretty rad. And that's it. So let's take a look at what the creatures are. Okay, for starters, we have Birkin Stage 1. Wild Fury. When resolving movements and attacks, uh, he'll prioritize the closest model instead of the active. That's a little twist. Unstable. Once his health reaches 8, Remove the iron pipe cards from his deck and add bludgeon. So he just starts punching. Pinned, a character performing a move action while on his square must evade or suffer one and remain in the square. Ouch. And then stage... F oh, and he has uh, 18 HP. Stage 5, you can't kill, I guess. Or at least he has a star amount of HP. Let's find out. Raw aggression. He moves in the reaction phase if it was not hit during the action. Imperious Mass. He cannot be killed by attacks. His health dial begins on zero and damage is counted up rather than down. Each behavior card is a threshold number. If a card is drawn, if he has suffered equal to or more damage than that threshold number, remove the card from the game. So you gotta kill off Birkin's deck. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, here's our iron pipe. If the target's on the same square, decrease the evade difficulty by one level, but it deals two damage, and it's a level 3 evade, or maybe level 2 if they are on the same square. Iron pipe, iron pipe, iron pipe. Stalk. 
just moves toward you quite a bit. Pipe throw, ouch. And it has a range of three, it looks like, for two damage. Yeah, of course, it makes sense you only do that once. And then bludgeon, he gets mad. Uh, if he is unable to attack, it performs a move instead. And I, what's the exclamation point? It knocks you out? It's been a while. Bludgeon, bludgeon, bludgeon. Okay. And then we have stage five's tentacle drag. A character hit by this is pushed two squares toward him. Threshold 10, you really have to lay on the damage, are you kidding me? And it does one, but it's very hard to evade. And it's line of sight, it just hits you. That's insane. Four tentacle drags. And then hurl wreckage for two. And then threshold 20, good lord. Snap jaw, three damage, threshold 28? I guess you need to deal that much damage by that point. And then Massive Bite for freaking four. Threshold 29. That's crazy. Let me check that rule one more time. Okay, if you suffered equal to or more damage than the threshold number just in general. I, I was going to say there's no way you're doing that in one turn. That sounds interesting. So... Here's stage one. So you get that mad scientist look. He's holding the pipe. He's not looking so good. And then, of course, you have the uh, the real star of the show here, stage five, which is somehow even bigger than stage four, even as far as this board game is concerned. I'm having difficulty taking him out with one hand. He's so big. This thing's actually kind of heavy. This is crazy. Look at that detail on him. Oh boy, I think he's had about enough. And remember, his real head is, like, up there. I just tapped the freaking tentacle with my camera. This thing is, my goodness. Look at that. This guy's no joke. You know what, why don't we take a look at this last scenario? Okay, here we are with the final scenario. I realized, by the way, that I neglected to show the art on the Stage 1 card. There we go. And the Stage 5 card. There we go. So we have Leon on the train. This is all one long hallway, no doors, don't worry about it, despite the red outlines. There are two items here, a magnum and a grenade launcher. I don't think any character in the game can wield both. I, I don't know, hunk, but he's not part of this. So Leon has the magnum, right? Not the grenade launcher. So there are only two cards. I hope I get the right one first. Now you start the game with the knife, first aid spray, handgun, shotgun, and bow gun. But the Leon, uh, Leon cannot wield the bow gun, so shotgun it is. And I have the Magnum ammo counter for when I pick up the Magnum, because you know that I'm going to do that. Here's Birkin. Here's his health at zero. And as for Birkin himself, crunch. That is crazy. So I gotta fight him and try to not die. That's my goal through all this. So... I guess we'll just get started, right? This is what I just have to do. So let's go one, two, three. Now I'm going to attack because if I pick up the item, then he will move and I'm a little afraid of, well, well. No, maybe it will be worth it, actually. Let's, let's grab the item, let's just do it. Come on. Oh, awesome, all right. We got ourselves a Magnum. Unfortunately, we got ourselves Crunch. Because it says um, he makes a move if it was not hit. Well, actually, he might. I think he probably just attacks as well. So whatever. Let's just draw the card. I don't know. I'll risk it. So we have uh, Tentacle Drag. That's line of sight. If I'm hit by this, I push two squares toward him. And this is a level three evade, which is quite difficult so let's let's just get started right now uh nope no that is a level one evade so ah uh, so good thing i already got the item right and i suffer one damage this is not going well so i now have a magnum let's make use of it we have a red die right i'm just gonna freaking unload on this guy so let's do oh that is a blue die let's do one okay that's one attack that's two attacks. That's good for uh, three damage. That's nothing. And
and that's good for three damage. Okay, so Birkin takes a grand total of six damage. Maybe I'll maybe I'll cheat later. We'll find out. Magnum goes down to, oops, everything on my left hand here, and I'm a right-handed person. So we go down to two shots of the Magnum. I don't think this is going to end very well for me, to be perfectly honest. The Magnum was kind of my ace in the hole. I, I might just cheat and redo this, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. So it is now time for Birkin to attack. So Tentacle Drag again. Can I level 3 dodge this? I actually can, which is incredible. So that just didn't work. Good for me. Now, let's see, I'll use my last two Magnum shots. Three damage. Three damage. That's more like it. Magnum's out. That's it. Goodbye, Magnum. We're done. But, we now have a threshold of 12. That's getting a little better. For my third move, yeah, I'll just attack. I will attack with the shotgun, which is two dice. The bad news is, at best, I can only do up to one damage per hit. That's the scary thing. How am I going to reach 29 at this rate? I actually don't think I can. Anyway, that's a hit. I, well, I guess it's damage per explosion, so that's one damage. And one more damage. So I'm down to three shotgun shells. And Birkin has 14 damage. Birkin attacks. He does hurl wreckage. Easy to dodge, but don't get hit. So, easily dodged. Goodbye, buddy. Now I attack with the shotgun again. A complete miss. One. Two. So Birkin is now at 16. And shotgun's out. Goodbye, shotgun. It was fun while it lasted. And... Handgun. Uh, two damage. Eighteen. I think this is straight up impossible at this point, by the way. Fourteen, thirteen, twelve. Okay, Birkin's turn. Uh, this has the shield of twenty-six, no way. Tentacle drag. Hard dodge. Miserable failure. Ah! And one damage. So next, one, two. Uh, one, two, three. Very nice. And two more. Five damage. That ain't bad. Twenty-three. And I am now down uh, six more bullets. So that's uh, down to six. So basically, I must connect with every single bullet to stop him. Literally every one. Because that'll be twenty-nine. Okay, so we draw a snap jaw. Of course, it's a high threshold. Of course, it is. Three damage, level two dodge. Uh, nope, so that should outright kill me. But in a strange twist of fate, I actually rolled a level two dodge on my first try. It's incredible. So that's that attack. Now I will attack with my pistol. And what do you know? Wow, three damage. Incredible. And now for my second attack. Unbelievable. I can't believe that worked out. Wow, he... Threshold 29. And I haven't discarded any cards, by the way, because my threshold was too low the entire time. I, mean, I suppose I could still attack with a knife if I had to, but, like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> All right, so I'm out of handgun ammo. Birkin's turn. And by the way, now that I'm at 29, anything he throws at me is going to be discarded. So we have Massive Bite Threshold 29, actually. Very hard to dodge, a ridiculous 4 damage. Incredible. Alright, so uh, we discard Massive Bite forever. Next, actually, come to think of it, you know what? I should have probably just attacked once and run away so it doesn't come toward me, because now he's going to come toward me every turn. I could have really drawn this out for time. But I can't do that unless I attack him with a freaking knife. I suppose I could do that, actually. Let's do, uh... Yeah, let's 
One, two. I'll take a swing with the knife, which is... Yeah, just the one die. Oh, God. Uh, well, I hit him. All right, that would do one damage. That's good enough. And then my last move will be run back. Birkin uh, does tentacle drag, which is a level three dodge. Nope. Ah, uh, and I also bump into him. So, um, that's two damage, actually. And tentacle drag is gone forever. Hooray! Now I will use my first aid spray. One, two, three. I will, one, two, three, run away. And now I will do a crap job at shuffling these cards, but I'm doing my best to distract myself so I don't know what the hell is happening right now. So, a uh, tentacle drag. Remove from the game forever. Uh, oh no! Ah! One damage. So now I'll run away. One, two, three, four. I'll, I'll just live here. It's fine. Oof, he moves toward me. Uh, tentacle drag. And this is unfortunately line of sight, so it will hit me from anywhere unless I actually manually dodge it. Which this time I legitimately do. I, I mean, I've always legitimately done it. So uh, I will do one, two, three, four, whatever. He does snap jaw, which does not have the range, although he does move toward me, which actually means it does have the range. So defense roll of two I need. Nope. Uh, that is three damage, which means actually, just now that I think about it, it was, oh, I dodged it. Wow, cool. He missed. Uh, crazy. Uh, next I'll do one, two, three, four. He draws tentacle drag, which hits from anywhere. Cool. Legitimately dodged. Uh, oh, and he, he moved closer that time too. Next, you can see how hard this mission is actually. Like, you really better do your job. Finally, uh, hurl wreckage, legitimately easy to dodge, which means I'll screw it up. No, we're good. And he's out of cards. Is he out of cards when I discard the last card, or when he's... Just when there's no more cards in his deck. Yay, I guess I killed him. Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Do, 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 do. But as you can see, that's, that's the whole scenario. It's very basic, but that's what it was in the video game. Just shoot at him until there's nothing left to do. This is quite hard, actually, because there's just this slow sense of inevitability with this physically heavy figure, just like, just closer every time. You gotta just throw everything you can at him. It's pretty easy to run out of ammo, as you saw with my attempts. I could knife him. That is an option. I could knife him. But, oh man, that means that you're in range of his, like, if you miss with the knife, and he moves toward you, then you just get bumped, and you suffer one damage, and possibly one more damage. This is no joke. Despite how incredibly simple the scenario looks, it's, like, deceptively simple. It's easy to know how to win, but it's very easy to lose. But there you go. This was, um, a campaign that I did not realize existed in this set. The Malformations of GB expansion, the super secret final campaign for the Resident Evil 2 board game. That covers all the campaign stuff and even the G stuff. But you know what? We're not quite done yet. There's actually more to see. Until next time, everyone.